Welcome back, everybody. History guy here, and uh, still a little bit of soreness, so you can hear those S's, and I apologize for that. But I'm going ahead and doing my promised replay, Battle of Chancellorsville, and I'm holding back for the most part, just trying to catch some of these guys out in the open here. I did grab two of his supplies that were foolishly by themselves. I've already destroyed one brigade completely, and I'm about to do the same to Ayers. But for the most part, other than that, I'm holding back and I'm going to wait for the flank attack to truly try and destroy his army. Let's get these supplies back behind my lines. And I'll go ahead and come back probably when we're ready for part two because really, like, like I said, I'm just holding everybody back. I'm not really engaging on day one. I'll come back for the flank attack and we'll see how that goes. All right, so I'm in the process of overrunning the first few un units on the edge of Howard's core here. I'm going to try to bag these guys as quick as I can and not let them fall back to the rest. I'm going to get the Louisiana Tigers back behind him. He's actually hitting my other side pretty hard here right now. Got to get Ziggler out of there. I kind of left a minimal force over there. I'm hoping at least I can isolate and destroy a couple of these units here. Looks like one of them's going to get behind me. Definitely some trouble over here on this side. I just don't have the manpower that I need. Oh boy. Alright, we gotta get Fitzhugh over here to help out. Actually, I'll send him after Chapman. Alright, we've got to continue to press the flank attack toward the objective and just hang on for dear life over here where things are not going well at all. I had a bunch of artillery sitting here by itself with only one brigade to defend them. Alright, we'll come back. Okay, I'm overrunning some of his men now. My men are exhausted though, so I'm not going to press this too much more. Because I've still got another day. I'm starting to get a little bit messed up here. But the casualties are working out in my favor. So I'm just going to try to isolate and hit some of these units. But then kind of call it a day. I stabilize things over here. You can see nighttime is falling. There's a three star brigade I'm about to destroy. Boom, gone. 
See if we can get up and get these guys. So I'm just going to kind of do a little clean up here and then let this timer tick out so we can get into the next day. And we'll see where things stand. Okay, so now you can see we're going into the last day of the battle. Got about a 9,000 man advantage, 9,500. So that should bode well. So we'll dive right in. I just got to be careful here. I don't want to get too crazy. I want to be cautious. I want to push him back slowly. Inflict as many casualties as possible. Alright, so we're starting to engage the enemy now. I'm pulling some of my smaller brigades back so they don't get annihilated. Law, Virginia Brigade. Not entirely sure why my artillery moved up that far. But I know he's going to be getting some reinforcements, I believe, from up here, so I've got to be cautious and cover that ground as best I can. But I'm trying to slowly just piecemeal destroy him. And I think I should be able to do that. I just tighten this noose. We'll, just, we'll see how this affects his army going into Gettysburg. Okay, with an hour and a half to go, you can see where things are right now. I had to get over here with some supplies for these guys because they were running low on ammo. Let's see if we can get Zook out of there. And I'm just trying to cause casualties right now. As many as I can. Paper Collar Brigade, Chris, you'll be glad to see he's doing much better this time around. 933, 313. Just tightening the noose. Alright, we gotta be careful here. Right now we're down to. Yeah, about 26,000 for the Union. About to drive him out of the objective. All right, I knew he was going to get reinforcements up here, and I was ready for it. So hopefully I've got him bottled up. He can't help out. I'm going to move these Napoleons up here to help out with this. I've secured the objective. I'm just pushing them back now. I'm trying to inflict more casualties. And we'll see what the final tally is here in a little bit. Alright, so here's the end of the battle. And as you can see, uh, 25,000 infantry, 4,000 artillery, 79 cavalry, and 705 missing. Last time I played this battle, he had almost 12,000 infantry, uh, 1,500 artillerymen, 132 cavalry, no missing. On my side last time, I had 7,100. Uh, so mine went up by about, what, 9, 10,000. Uh, I lost 800 more men uh, this time than last time. And uh, 400 more cavalry. So mine went up by about 10,000 men, 11,000 men. His went up by about uh, 14,000, 15,000. Uh, the big difference this time is, last time I didn't get, get any supplies. This time I captured uh, 10,000 supplies, 30 10-pounder, which, which I think I only had like seven last time. Grabbed a lot more cannon. Uh, also grabbed a lot more Harper's Ferry. I think I only had maybe a 1, thousand, fifteen hundred of them last time. So significantly more weapons that I grabbed this time around. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get into Salem Church. I'll play through that real quick and then come back and we'll see how it affected the army moving forward. Okay, so let's discuss what happened here. <clears throat> last time, after the Battle of Chancellorsville, his available army was 66 to 71,000. So that has gone down by about 13,000. But last time I had 62,000 left in my army. 
and I'm now down to 48, so mine's actually gone down by 14,000. Uh, the difference being, of course, that I have a lot more good weaponry than I had last time because I grabbed a lot of that stuff. Uh, so even though the numbers kind of remain the same, I think just in terms of overall strategy, it works out in my favor. Um, funny thing is, even though his numbers are down by 13,000, his starting number for Gettysburg is exactly the same. That did not change. Uh, so I think what that means is that even though day one will be the same, day two for him is going to have far fewer men. So I think I'm going to stick with this, this alternate timeline, so to speak, just because I got more supplies, I got more weapons, and the, the difference between his army and mine remains about the same. Um, although the percentage difference, obviously, is more in his favor. So... I don't know. I'm going to think about this a little bit. Let me know what you think. And uh, we'll start fighting the Battle of Gettysburg probably tomorrow. By then, I should be talking normally again. And uh, I'll be ready to narrate that battle. So, as always, thanks for watching. And we will see you again very soon.